My name is Jacob Rees-Mogg, and you are listening to Raw. Good morning. Welcome to Newsreel. The time is 12 minutes past 10 on this Tuesday morning. One story um, we're going to talk about today, which is, of course, the Manchester terrorist um, attack. I'm joined in the studio to discuss this with me by Johnny Meller, Dan Welsh and Jack Abbey. And first of all, we're going to go through a sort of very comprehensive list of what is known about the uh, attack so far. And then I'm going to get sort of my guests' opinions on the um, the issue. And then maybe later on, we'll talk about something student related. So... Um, as the news has been reporting, at least 22 people have been killed and 59 people have been wounded in an explosion at the end of a concert by the American singer Ariana Grande in the city of Manchester, which happened at around half past 10 yesterday evening. Um, two officials from the US have described this as a suspected suicide bombing. Um, Prime Minister Theresa May has said that the incident was being treated as a terrorist attack. If this is the case, it would be the deadliest militant assault in Britain since four um, British Muslims killed 52 people in a suicide bombing on London's transport system on the 7th of July back in 2005. Police responded to reports of an explosion shortly after 10.33pm at the arena, which has the capacity to hold up to 21,000 people, um, where the singer Ariana Grande, of course, had been performing to an audience that included many children, uh, young people and teenagers whose parents had dropped them off earlier in the evening. Police have since set up the emergency telephone number um, in response to the attack. This is, of course, for people who are worried about missing persons, of which I believe there are at least 15 still remaining. The number is 0161 856 9400. You can get that online as well. Um, a witness who attended the concert said that she felt a huge blast as she was leaving the arena, followed by screaming and a rush by thousands of people trying to escape the building. Um, a video posted on Twitter showed fans, many of them young, screaming and running from the venue, and dozens of parents have been frantically searching for their children since, posting photos and pleading for information on social media. Um, Manchester News MEN is the um, one of the best Twitter pages uh, for this. A witness named Catherine McFarlane told Reuters, we were making our way out and when we were right by the door, there was a massive explosion and everybody was screaming. Uh, that lady had actually attended the concert. Um, she also said it was a huge explosion. You could feel it in your chest. It was chaotic. Everybody was running and screaming, just trying to get out. Ariana Grande, who is, of course, the, uh, the singer who people were um, flocking to the Manchester Arena to see, who's 23, later said on Twitter that she was broken. And from the bottom of her heart, she said, I am so, so sorry. I don't have words. Theresa May, who faces an election in two and a half weeks, said her thoughts with the victims and their families. And the Conservative Party have suspended campaigning, as have many of the other p parties. Um, Theresa May also said that we are working to establish the full details of what is being treated by the police as an appalling terrorist attack. And she also said that all of our thoughts are with the victims and the families of those who have been affected. Islamic State supporters have taken to social media to celebrate the blast and some encourage similar attacks elsewhere. Britain is currently on its second highest alert for, for terrorism, which is severe, meaning an attack by militants is considered highly likely. And the US Department of Homeland Security, uh, which is monitoring the situation in Manchester, has said that no information has currently arisen to indicate a specific credible threat involving music venues in the United States. Um, British counter-terrorism police have said that they are making an an average arrest every day in connection with suspected terrorism. And of course, Theresa May this morning um, is holding a meeting with uh, COBRA, which is the um, sort of the terrorism crisis team to discuss the um, the incident and to potentially consider re-evaluating the threat level. Um, Chief Constable Ian Hopkins said it was the most horrific incident Greater Manchester has ever faced and he said that the fast-moving investigation is now underway to establish whether the attacker was acting alone or as part of a network. Um, just going to go to my guests now and ask what their reaction um, is to this particular event. Johnny, what do you think of it all? Uh, I'd say my, my immediate reaction was, of course, uh, shock and you know, feeling of sadness that this, this sort of event still happens in this day and age. Um, it comes, uh, obviously you don't expect these sort of things, but it still was much of a shock as, as many of these instance are uh, especially the most recent the Westminster as well very similar kind of echoes here uh, but the the kind of concern I had was obviously we don't know much about who this person is so my, my fear is that it's used on a uh, in, a, in a wider context uh, I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen. Mm. Dan what are your um, thoughts about the whole issue? Uh, well basically the same with Johnny you know uh, obviously shocked and horrified at the attack um, and you know, I think like people have kind of expected this in a way, and obviously other countries in Europe have had it. So I don't think it was. I didn't find it that surprising, really, that it happened. Mm. Jack, what do you think? 
Yeah, I kind of half agree with Dan that it's it's something that obviously shocks us all, but at the same time, uh, we've become. I don't I don't know what the word for it is, but we there there it's happened in Europe. Maybe. Yeah, a little bit desensitized. It's happened in Europe. We still find it sad. We still find it horrifying, but we have a bit of a routine. The when it happens, this is how we react. Mm. This is what we do, and and the routine does seem to work, and it's a good routine that we we keep going and and that kind of thing. But at the same time, it's we a have sad to, situation. Yeah, it's a sad being, situation that we, we have, have to, a routine. For yeah, this sort yeah, of thing. exactly. That we have to. We 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 find ourselves in a situation where we kind of know what we're doing at this point, and mm. this is a situation in which we'd prefer not to know what we're doing. Well, we're going to go to a song now, and then we'll come back to um, more facts and um, information and discussion of the terrorist attack in Manchester shortly afterwards. My name is uh, Sadiq Khan. I'm running to the mayor of London, and you're listening to Raw. Welcome back to Newsreel. We're going to continue talking about the Manchester terrorist attack. We're joined now in the studio by Michelle Watson, who will be offering her opinion at different points throughout the programme. Um, we've had some updates online, uh, one of which is from a fellow called Afshin Shahi, who is a security and terrorism expert, who has told BBC Breakfast he very much doubts that the attack was carried out by a lone wolf, saying it was absolutely consistent with other terrorist atrocities carried out over Europe. He said, no far, um, nobody from so-called Islamic State has actually claimed responsibility on social media for the attack, but he said accounts that are affiliated to the group have celebrated the news and warned that there may be more attacks to come in other cities in Europe. Mr Shahi says it, it is important to talk about the attack because there is a limit to what the security services can do. He also says that the problem is not just a security issue, but also a political, cultural, ideological and mental health issue. And he says, finally, that to uh, address the issue, we need to broaden our lenses. Johnny, um, we were sort of discussing very briefly who may or may not have done uh, the attack during the song. Obviously, we don't know yet. Um, what are your sort of thoughts on what you've just heard from this this expert? Um, I, I wouldn't be, I'm not at all surprised that affiliate groups would be celebrating a, a terrorist attack. That's the, the whole point of a terrorist organisation. That I, I'm not sure they really care who does it, mm. as long as they're causing harm and fear in, in the West or in their enemies' groups. I, I think it's, from their point of view, it's an enemy of my enemy type situation, whether or not they're directly linked to the actual attack itself, I think you know, they're, they're very likely to celebrate it. Whether or not they were involved, with that, that's where the investigation will, will shed light. Mm. We, we can't make these kind of assumptions mm. that I think this man is making. I think he did make some very good points about you know the cultural and political society aspect of this and that, frankly, yes, uh, many of these attacks are, or some of them aren't really preventable mm. a lot of the time through direct security reasons, but can be in a society context mm. of not creating these people who are ostracized from the community, mm. making sure that everyone's included uh, and feels feels you know comfortable. Okay. Dan, do you agree with what Johnny said about the sort of the importance of the mental health and social um, contributors to things like this? Well yeah, we don't really <clears throat> obviously we don't know anything about this guy. I did see that they said that the like uh, sophistication of the bomb could indicate that he maybe had trained abroad or something. So we don't really know. Obviously, like the Westminster attack was uh, like consistent with what Johnny said, where he was like a guy who had had problems in the past. But uh, I think that we don't really want to jump to any conclusions before mm. we know like who this guy is, like where, you know whether he had trained abroad and had returned, or whether he was you know had issues in the past. Okay. Something else that's um, sort of been been unified in the response to the attack has been um, messages of support from various foreign leaders. Um, the Chinese President Xi Jinping has sent a message to the Queen expressing deep condolences to the victims and heartfelt thoughts to the injured families of the victims, um, according to official news agencies in China. In addition to that, um, people like Emmanuel Macron, Angela Merkel... Uh, and Donald Trump have also expressed condolences and have sent messages of solidarity to Theresa May and the British people more broadly. Um, in terms of some more eyewitness accounts, eyewitnesses have described seeing metal nuts and bolts, among other debris, um, flying sort of around after or immediately after the attack and spoke about the fear and confusion that gripped the concert goers. Um, another um, eyewitness, Andy Holy, who had gone to the arena to pick up his wife and daughter, said, um, an explosion went off and it threw me about 30 feet from one set of doors to the other. Um, he said, when he got up, I saw bodies lying on the ground. My first thought was to get into the arena and try and find his family. Um, like we said earlier, police have established a help centre at the Etihad Stadium, um, access gate 11 for anyone who needs assistance in tracing loved ones. Twitter has been flooded with appeals from relatives 
and friends of Missing Concert Goers via the hashtag uh, Missing in Manchester. Facebook has activated a safety check feature so that people can let their families and friends know that they are safe. Uh, the blast happened close to the entrance to the Victoria well, Railway and tram station. Subsequently, the station has been closed and all trains there have been cancelled. Police also carried out a precautionary controlled explosion in the Cathedral Garden area of the city at around 1.32 a.m. this morning. The force later confirmed that it was not a dangerous item and Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham said that the city would pull together, adding that that's what we are, that's what we do, they won't win. Um, countries from across the world, including the United States and Japan and Singapore, are considering tightening security ahead of major theatre and sporting events following this attack. Um, and so we'll sort of talk about that in a moment. Um, broadly, though, I want to ask my guests, how important do you think it is that we carry on? Um, should we carry on as normal or should, do, you, do you think we should step up anti-terror procedures because of course a lot of people say you know immediately after attacks like this we w they won't win we mustn't let them sort of influence the way we live our lives but at the same time there are others who would argue that um, we should potentially you know strengthen security to ensure that um, attacks like this don't claim more lives in the future Johnny which course of action do you think is more advisable and it's a difficult call to make I would very much be in favor of increasing uh, security measures on in the caveat that it does not increase uh you know, xenophobic views or anti anti certain groups of people. I mean, that's really key. We don't want to ever do anything that increases that. You know, your your basic security obviously can be increased. I have no issue with that. Uh, I I obviously continuing the resolve. Obviously, it's the the classic. Don't let the terrorists win. Continue your lives. You know, but I I think that's that's incredibly important. But in addition, I think this should uh, kind of further the internet. Uh, the UK's resolve to sort out or help aid the issues in these countries where these ideologies are being fostered potentially. I am in that instance assuming it's as we've said ISIS affiliates were sorting out issues in this in that area or at minimum you know not interfering and causing even more problems which we have been doing in the past. Uh, I think it's also important to point out this is a, a travesty an absolute tragedy in in the uk there are multiple times more deaths in other countries in the middle east under similar terrorist attacks almost weekly and i think I, th I think we need to make sure that it's clear that it is dreadful what's happened in the uk it's also very dreadful as well in the rest of the world we need to sort out everywhere okay michelle what are your thoughts i kind of half disagree with what johnny said in sort of like the whole xenophobic attitude towards people that's going to increase regardless that like you can't counter that no matter how hard people try because there will always be people that take it too far that go do you know what it's the fault of this these people and we're going to target them and attack them so i mean in essence i think uh, it's kind of part don't do anything you you don't want to overreact to something like this especially since there have been more serious attacks in other places so it might be more prudent to think how can we stop it as a whole rather than attacking this one specific um this one specific event okay john you want to come back on that um yes yeah, so that's why i said um increased security measures to the extent that it doesn't increase xenophobia or increase or because there are physical things like you know traffic barriers and these sorts of things for the westminster attack uh, more scanning okay. that don't actually increase xenophobic attitudes yeah, yeah. if it's say watch out for someone in a turban yeah, yeah that's an issue we don't want anything like that and uh, that has no place in our society yeah. and i don't think it's helpful to argue we should stop trying not bother trying to reduce xenophobia just because there are people who are racist around or xenophobic i don't think that's a helpful attitude i think we should always be striving to you know, increase the tolerance of our society knowing that yes there will always be some people as long as we can reduce the the amount and prevalence and frequency of people who are you know up to cause cause harm no okay dan what do you think of what uh, has been said so far yeah, I think that um, we need to like put stuff into perspective that this is like only the se well, there's the Westminster attack. This is only the second bombing in Britain in the last ten years, so we have been quite successful at stopping terrorist attacks. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I mean, it's obviously too early to say. We don't really know whether there was any, like, um, you know, ha what actually happened in this attack. Some people, I know that there was some speculation because they said that it was out, like, in a public area outside the arena. That it might have been somebody who was trying to get in and was like shot while doing so and blew himself up but we don't, obviously don't know so mm. it may be that there were like uh, specific security failures um, 
like in this area, but I think it's way too early to say. My name's uh, Professor AC Grayling, and you're listening to Raw. Welcome back to Newsreel. Um, we're going to talk about the Manchester attack just for a little bit longer, and then we'll start talking about the all student meeting, which happened at Warwick's SU just yesterday. We've also had a message in from Jack, who asks that we play something by the Smiths or by Oasis, as they're from Manchester. So we will definitely do that um, later on the show. Thank you for your message, Jack. Um, so. An ex-counter-terror chief has said, according to the BBC, that an attack, the attack is not is potentially not over. Um, Chris Phillips, the former head of National Counter-Terrorism Security, told the BBC that the attack had been carried out quite professionally. It's something that Dan um, referred to earlier in, in terms of the sophistication of the device and warned that it was probably potentially not yet over. He also added that he would be very surprised if there was only one suicide belt and would also be surprised if, it only, if only one set of explosives was used and certainly he'd be even more surprised if only one person was involved. So that is another um, professional opinion from a counter-terrorism chief. Um, we're going to continue asking questions to my panel. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, other countries have considered stepping up um, anti-terrorist procedures and uh, have considered increasing security. What impact do you think this terrorist attack will have on the rest of the world? Because obviously over the last couple of years in Europe, we've had far too many terrorist um, attacks and they've been in other parts of the, of, of Europe though, and it's difficult to judge how much those um, sort of incidents have affected things in this country. So how it's a difficult one to call, I agree, but what do you think this attack will mean for the rest of the world? Do you think it will have any real sort of implications, Johnny? Um, I think the, the the previously mentioned countries that were quoted as considering to step up their uh, anti-terrorism are all East Asian countries. I don't think they've experienced from this this particular group the same the same level mm -hmm. of of uh, terrorist acts in in any comparative way. Obviously, they've got their own local issues. Um, I think it would be it would be the right step for them if they're trailing behind with the rest of the modern world in anti-terrorism but i'm not sure that's the case um i think i think we get, I mean, it comes back to the argument of frequency and kind of the modern era we're living in i don't think this one specific attack will have the most impact abroad i think the general kind of last couple of years as a trend will um i as you said there have been larger and more prevalent or there have been other attacks in europe recently i don't think this will be the one that kickstarts any particular big big trends mm -hmm. but okay. we shall see okay michelle what implications do you think this will have for the rest of the world i think people will be like oh this has happened what could we have done to prevent it but i don't think it will be anything different to what they've already got in place mm -hmm. rather than just like added security measures or things like that that people tend to say in these situations i think other than that they can't really add anything more to what they've already got. Okay. And finally, Dan, what do you think uh, this will mean for the rest of the world? Yeah, probably not much. I mean, like, I don't think much changed after the Westminster attack a few months ago. Um, uh, like I said, if there's any, like, specific security failures, then you might see something like that change. Mm. But apart from that, I don't really think that it'll make a huge difference. Okay. Johnny? Um, just one one thing I read after the Westminster attack that was very interesting. It was how um, counterterrorism has moved from the kind of explicit uh, counterterrorism of you know just get more police out mm. get increased barriers and this sort of thing to more discreet uh, anti uh, for example truck barriers they disguise them as massive plant pots in London now this kind of thing that are less obvious f to the public mm. that there are these counterterrorism measures in place so it would be, no be nice to see that, that that's increased as opposed to explicit counterterrorism which obviously is quite not fear mongering but it has more of a presence so that would be good to make sure that you know, the public are less aware of these okay. massive uh, dangers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you to all my guests for um, aiding me in the discussion of the Manchester terrorist attack. Please do follow the Raw News Twitter at Raw News Warwick, and we will post any updates as and when they unfold throughout the day.